There are only five events left in the 2019 AUG Olympics, and event number 10 brings us back to the original roots of marble racing. This is Professor CC19, and welcome to event 10 of the 2019 Summer Marble AUG Olympics, the Classic Marble Race. And this is the course that started it all, the very first marble racing course to be featured on this channel in a video, and all the team members are excited about being back here today for the original course. This course was being raced upon even before the Alg Olympics existed. And the 16 team marbles running today are second in the lineup, the letter P for Team Neon. Also second in the lineup, Shadow of the Black Knights, who has recovered from his injury in event number 8 and is ready to try and keep the Black Knights' streak of medals alive. We also have On the Button, the only team member of the O'Raiders who has not earned a medal yet, would love to earn his first today. Third in the lineup, Thunder of the Mystic Twisters. Back Marbles Warrior, Bishop, Bomber, and Jest for Crimson Crusaders, Azure Royals, Fireballs, and Jack's Jokers, respectively. Second in the lineup, Grayscale, uh, pardon me there, second in the lineup, Drawing for the Grayscales. The three team captains running in this event, Purple of the Ultraviolets, Cool Mint of the Minter Greens, and Upstream of the Strawberry Streamers, and the other four are third in the lineup, Feller of the Yellow Fellas, Blizzard of the Icers, Glossy of the Gold Globes, and Transparent Green of Team Transparent. Now, with that said, this is also the course featured in event number 12, the finale of the 2018 Games. It's making its appearance a little bit earlier this year, but like I said, all 16 marbles are eager to get started, excited about running the classic course. And just a reminder of what this course has, it has a little bit of everything. Bowls, chutes, slalom paths, spinners, trampolines, anti-gravity and gravity pads, which are somewhat unique to this event. Um, as you can see here, we have the trampoline very similar to Hurdles, which, by the way, is our next event, event number 11. Um, we have some gears towards the bottom, a lot more colored bowls than we usually see. And then they're just classic black bowls down the bottom, and one final Plinko cage to give the marbles one last shot at passing if they're very close to one another before they touch the teleporter and go to the finish line. And yes, I know, we use Plinko in a lot of different events. So anyway, this is not like golf or BMX cycling. Um, the marbles can interfere with each other's races, so it is not, um, they're all running for themselves just at the same time. No, they can fight with each other if there's a close battle for the top spot. They can try and knock the other marbles back and try and give themselves an advantage. This can be just as much a battle as it can be a race. And we're just about ready to get things started. We will in just a moment. All we have to do is hit the play button and allow the marbles to get mixed around, bounced around a little bit in starting gates before we release them by deleting this left starting gate block and kick things off in event number 10. And we're going to do so in 3, 2, 1, go. All right, this big horde of marbles, if you will, all 16 of them, are headed towards that first opening in the large bowl. Looks like Asher Royals are going to be the first team through it, followed by Fireballs. Appropriately, those are the top two teams in the overall standings, sitting at 98 and 97, respectively. So yes, it is an excellent battle between the two of them. Looks like they got passed by a few others, Mystic Twisters, Jack's Jokers, and looks like Ultraviolets were up there and kind of got nudged back towards the left but still maintaining the fifth spot in this early section of the course. Now, a few things I need to mention going down slalom here. Um, the opening section is fairly insignificant. The two most important obstacles are this large spinner coming up and the trampoline hurdles towards the end of the course. Those are the two most defining obstacles. They can really set teams apart for doing well, having a chance at the podium, or struggling and finishing towards the back of the pack. I will also say that the team that is trained the most on the trampoline specifically is Ultraviolets. And that might be important. Ultraviolets right now running in last place, looking to make up ground in the trampoline section of this course. Their training there should also benefit them in our next event, Hurdles. In the meantime, Jack's Joker is trying to do better than they did in the last event, finishing last place. They have done that in two of the past three. So Jack's Joker is looking for anything to get their momentum going again. Second place, following Azure Royals down the ramp. A good push, 
would put a team way ahead on this anti-gravity section. Here, O Raiders getting a better push than Shadow of the Black Knights, but we haven't really seen anything spectacular. By spectacular, I mean really airborne, going halfway across the anti-gravity pads. And there is the chance of the teams doing that, but really we haven't really seen anybody do so. They're all conserving their energy, not really taking any risks. And I guess it's an okay strategy, but um, not really that entertaining. Ultraviolet's the last team to try... They get an okay push, but nothing really that great. So for the second year in a row, all the teams playing it safe, staying pretty much lockstep in their order past this first section, making it a little bit less important than it could be. Now, one other thing I need to mention is the fact that the end stretch of this course has been changed slightly. There's going to be less friction in the final set of bowls. One of the larger bowls and the final set of smaller bowls, which means it can be more of a battle between teams at the end. Alright, going against gravity, slow paced section of this course, that's why it's fairly short. Azure Royals and Jack's Jokers are your top two, followed by O Raiders and Shadow of the Black Knights, trying to redeem himself after his injury in Event 8. Alright, through this section of bowls and alternators, we'll see what will happen here. Looks like Jack's Joker's going to be the first team on through, then Black Knight's colliding with O-Raiders. Now here comes a big train of everybody else. Black Knight's getting caught up by Mystic Twisters coming in. This is the perfect opportunity for some of the others to make up some ground. That and in the trampolines. And Mystic Twisters, once again, a good push lands them right through the blue bowl, and they're going to be the first team to reach the trampolines. Azure Royal's going to be the second. Jack's Jokers and Black Knights diving right through the hole. Here comes the Raiders and now the Grayscales. Grimsy Crusaders, Gold Glows, pretty much everybody is going to be arriving in the... Um, arriving is not a word. Arriving in this section in the next couple seconds. One of the last teams to do so will probably be Ultraviolets, although this is the section where they're hoping to make up a lot of ground. Mystic Twisters with a low bounce, not quite able to make it over. But one team that is successful in doing so is O Raiders, our bright orange team into the purple bowl. Not really um, complementing colors, in fact, colors that are pretty far apart in the spectrum, but O Raiders are the first team to it. Yellow Fellas, Strawberry Streamers getting fairly close, but then Yellow Fellas getting pushed back. Everybody else is in this section now. And with everybody colliding with one another, O Raiders getting through this section early might be a huge advantage to them. Crimson Crusaders up and over. Jack Joker is getting very close, but no cigar for them. Also, Ultraviolets trying to put their training to good use in the trampolines, but they are still struggling with the collisions with other teams. Looks like Team Neon is the third to be up and over. That puts them in position for Bronze. Strawberry Streamers trying to be successful. And they are. Strawberry Streamers, of course, gold medalists in this event last year. Their only medal. This year, happy to have more. And once again, Ultraviolets got so close to making it over, but then got caught up with a collision with Yellow Fellas. And all of a sudden, Ultraviolets are all the way back up the ramp. That is not what they were looking for. And in contrast to that, Yellow Fellas rebounding nicely. Kind of sad there with all the training Ultraviolets has had just to have a mishap with another team colliding with them. And that's going to put Ultraviolets way back. Gold Globes, the first rookie team to make it past that major hurdle. Now that we're looking towards the end of the course, you can see what I mean. If you look back at Event 12 last year, and if you look at the video, you will see that the teams were not getting this high up in the bowl, as O Raiders is right now, and as Crimson Crusaders will be in a few moments. Strawberry Streamers looks like past Team Neon will be an interesting battle for third, but despite the decreased friction, I don't think anybody is going to be able to challenge O Raiders. That hurdles really was the deciding obstacle, and O Raiders and on the button, their only member who has not earned a medal yet, are in an excellent position to earn their first gold of the year. And if they can do so, that means they will be the top medal-earning team to this point with their fourth, which would be excellent. 
But looking farther back, Team Neon passing other teams for second place. But the team I'm most interested in is Mintergreens. Very close to the podium. In fact, the best they've done so far this year. But getting caught up with Jack's Jokers, it looks like Mintergreens, their bad luck will continue. Strawberry Stream is actually making up several positions. They're into second place trying to challenge O'Raiders, but it is not going to happen. Into Plinko, if O'Raiders has it here, they have it all the way, and looks like just waiting to make sure nothing crazy is going to happen. And it is. On the button of the O'Raiders earns his first medal. That means all four members of the team have earned medals uh, more this year than last year when only on the ball did. Strawberry Streamer is looking to come in second place to tie for the most medals so far this year with their second silver, which would be excellent for them. And Team Neon currently in position to get the bronze. We're watching out here. Crimson Crusaders, not too far behind, but Team Neon going off to the right. Crimson Crusaders on the left. That is going to be big news. Team Neon coming through with the bronze. So we have our podium. Raiders, Strawberry Streamers, and Team Neon. Looks like Crimson Crusaders in fourth. Team Neon with their best finish so far this year. It's either going to be 5th or 6th, depending on what Jack's Jokers does. And it will be 5th place for the Mintergreens. Now, looking back behind, we have a whole bunch of other teams closing in. Yellowfellas, Gold Globes, Fireballs, and Grayscales. This will be the first middle ground performance for the Gold Globes. Up to this point, they were always either in the top uh, 4 or the bottom 4. And this is going to be their first performance in the middle section of the leaderboard. Yellowfella is also in this final strip, but it looks like they're going to be off to the left. Gold Globes, it's not going to matter. Yellowfellas might get this, but no, Gold Globes going to hop on over. That's an excellent strategy. It is unique. Now, if teams get airborne here, ignore that. This is not going to be the final results here unless they actually stay stationary. Yellowfellas are going to be behind Gold Globes. Make a note of that. Make a mental note if you're watching this video. Gold Globes finished one spot better. Then we have Grayscales, Fireballs, Mystic Twisters coming down, Ultraviolets, and Azure Royals finishing in the bottom half. Looking back, Shadow of the Black Knights not able to redeem himself. Looking, nobody got stuck this year, which is a good thing. Now I'm going to turn my attention to here. We are going to have a battle for the bottom few positions. Black Knights, Team Transparent, and the Icers. Looks like Icers have a bit of an advantage, but with the other two teams working together, that advantage could go away. This event going a little bit faster than last year, thankfully. And also thankfully that nobody got, um, thankfully nobody got stuck. There is a odd glitch that can occur in the trampoline section, which we saw last year. Thankfully that glitch has been fixed. Icers trying to make it through for 14th to get at least two points for their efforts here. They have to guard here Team Transparent and Black Knights getting close. In fact, Team Transparent going right through the opening. That puts them in good position, but Icer's nudging them aside. It's going to come down to Plinko. Looks like Shadow, after that injury, is going to be in a bad position coming in last place in this event. Maybe it was unwise for them to run Shadow so soon for the Black Knights. But either way, they're going to get no points in this event. They're going to stay at 90, while Icers and Team Transparent battling it out, and Team Transparent right at the end is going to pass. So T Green is going to get two points, Icers only one, and Black Knights zero points in the Classic Marble Race. Now I'm going to turn my attention back up here, going to make a quick correction. Gold Globes ahead of Yellowfellas. That is how they finished. And these are your results of event number 10. Oh, Raiders, Gold, Strawberry Streamers, Silver, Team Neon, Bronze. Crimson Crusaders, 12 points for 4th. Mintergreens, 11. Jacks Jokers rebounding with 10. Gold Globes, 9. Yellowfellas in the top half with 8. Grayscale, 7. Fireballs, 6. Mystic Twisters, 5. Ultraviolets, 4. Better than last year. Azure Royals in the same position as last year, 3 points. Team Transparent, 2. Icers, 1 and Black Knights, zero. That makes my job a lot easier when we look at the standings for this event, because I just told you them. We're just going to take a quick look at our podium before we get to the overall standings for 2019.
All right, so to recap our podium here, we have O'Raiders with the gold and on the button earning his very first medal. Strawberry Streamers, like O'Raiders, earning their fourth medal so far this year. In particular, for Strawberry Streamers, they're so excited. However, they're still yearning for that gold so far this year. Two silver and two bronze, but they are elated to be rising up the leaderboard. They might actually be in the top half now because of this silver medal. And Team Neon rounding out their podium of medals, gold from rock climbing, silver from BMX cycling, and now bronze in the cla yeah, bronze in the classic race. And you can look all the way down through, we recapped these just a few moments ago. Grayscales and fireballs, I've noticed a pattern, they like to finish next to each other. Um they have done it a lot, they do it very often. And one thing that is news coming in, Black Knights, of course, they just finished last place for the third time in 2019, but we're hearing that Shadow has actually re-aggravated the injury, and it happened partly through the course on the trampoline section. So um, Shadow has re-aggravated the injury from BMX Cycling, and it's still a wonder that he was able to finish the course, but it seems like Black Knights right now are consulting with Bleak, Bleak is their fifth in the lineup, as so to speak, or their alternate marble. Each team has an alternate member if something happens to one of the members. And Black Knights are now considering if Shadow does not recover completely and well enough to compete by the time we get to the next team event, which is Team Pursuit, that Bleak should step in to replace him as a member of the Black Knights for the rest of 2019. Um, we will find out more as this goes. I'm sure by the intro to event number 11, Hurdles, we will know more about this. But as of right now, Shadow, uh, Shadow of the Black Knights, their second in the lineup, is re-injured. And they are considering him sitting out the rest of the Alg Olympics 2019 and being replaced with Bleak. Um, let's turn our attention now to the overall standings. We're in for some big surprises, some big shakeups with Azure Royals finishing so low. I think we're going to have a new leader in the overall standings. All right, I just said it. Here are the overall standings, and indeed there is a big shakeup. Four teams have now broken the 100 point mark, and O Raiders out of nowhere go from 10th up to first to take over the lead. One point clear of Team Neon, 106 to 105. Fireballs falling one spot from second to third at 103, and Azure Royals losing the lead, falling all the way to fourth at 101. Below 100, Crimson Crusaders remaining fifth at 98, and now Gold Globes and Strawberry Streamers all of a sudden are tied at 92. Strawberry Streamers have more medals, but Gold Globes have the more dominant colored medals. Black Knights still in the top half, staying stationary at 90. Grayscale slipping to the bottom half at 89. Team Transparent also down several spots at 87. Mystic Twisters falling two spots to 86. Ultraviolets falling another to 80. Uh, pardon me, there to 12th, 83 points. Jack's Jokers, Yellowfellas, Icers, and Minter Greens still your bottom four. Now it's 74, 70, 59, and 46. But finally, Minter Greens got a top half performance better than just eighth place. Um, this was their best performance so far in 2019. All right, so a lot of drama here with Black Knights. And uh, in the overall standings, a lot of teams. This is an excellent battle. We have four teams within five points at the top. A lot of others still within striking distance. So this is going to be an excellent battle going into the final four events. Number 11, like I said many times before, it is Hurdles. Then there is Elimination Basketball, Team Pursuit, and the final event, which is a brand new one. And I'm not going to say yet, but it is going to be a grand finale. Anyway, that is it for Event 10, the Classic Marble Race. If you enjoyed this event and you'd like to see the rest of the Alg Olympics, please subscribe. Um, if you have any comments about this race, cheering on your favorite team, uh, giving your thoughts about the course, or predicting who you think is going to win the entire games, please leave a comment below. Again, stay tuned for Event Number 11, which is coming soon, The Hurdles. This has been Profes uh, Professor CC19, and as always, thanks so much for watching.